Hello guys, this is Divya and I'm back with another episode of Personalities. Today we will be discussing about very famous personality, very important personality when it comes to you know modern history. So Dada Bhai Naroji. So before I begin, I would like to request to, request you to subscribe to share channel if you haven't yet. Also, there are many video series coming. So please make sure you press the bell notification so that you never miss an update. Also, uh, watch the foundational videos which are very important. For your UPSC preparation, it will burst all your myths and clear all your doubts. If you are, uh, you know, anyway serious about UPSC examination, you will you will not afford to skip the you know uh, foundational videos, right? And then consider you know taking the test series, which is very you know meticulously designed for UPSC. The serious aspirants, many serious aspirants are getting benefited by it, and we are getting many positive feedbacks how they are. Uh, you know seeing the change and how is it is um, you know benefiting them so if you want to be in the you know final list definitely you should uh, take the test series also right so let us now begin so dada bhai noreji he was famously known as grand old man of india or unofficial ambassador of india why now we'll know because he was an indian political leader merchant scholar writer and he was a member of the liberal party uh, right of the parliament of uk united kingdoms right so that's why he became the unofficial ambassador of india so uh, in the house of commons right there are there are also uh, in british also britain also there are two houses right of the parliament so he belong he was member of the house of commons so he was member from uh, in 1892 and then in 1895 so he was two times the mp there uh, and also he he was the second mp of indian descent to become a british mp and he is renowned for his work in the indian national congress and he was also one of the founding members of indian national congress so this is also a very important bit of information and then he was thrice the president of inc this is also important 1886 1893 1906 you have to remember this right then his book is famous for you know his theory and the his theory was presented in this book which is called poverty and unbritish rule in india again very important bit right then in this in this only he explained the you know wealth drain concept the concept of drain of wealth into britain so now let us know about his early life right so dada bhai Nauruji, he was born in navsari which is in Gujarat, I mean present day Gujarat, earlier in Bombay presidency and he was born into a Parsi Zoroastrian family and he was educated at the Elphinstone Institute School and he was patronized by as you can see him here Maharaja of Badoda Sayaji Rao Gaikwar III and he started his career as the Diwan okay who is the minister to the Maharaja in 1874 then he founded a Gujarati a uh, fortnightly publication called Rast Gostar, which means truth teller. In your, uh, the objective was to clarify the you know uh, Zoroastrian concepts and to promote Parsi social reforms. So he also published another newspaper called The Voice of India, and then this is also very important Voice of India. And then uh, in December 1855, he was appointed the professor of mathematics in Elphinstone College, right, in Bombay. And he became the first Indian to hold such, an, such a prestigious academic position. And then in 1859, he established his own cotton trading company, Tadabhai Naroji and Company, in London, right. This was in London in 1859. He moved to London and there he set up his own trading company, cotton trading company. And then in 1865, he directed and launched the London Indian Society and uh, the purpose of this society was to discuss Indian political, uh, social and literary subjects there in London and then in 1867 he helped to establish East India Association and this was this was one of the you know predecessor organizations of Indian National Congress and the aim was to uh, put across the Indian uh, Indian point of view before the British public then in 1874 he became the prime prime minister of baroda because he he moved back to india and he became the prime minister of baroda and he was also the member of legislative council of bombay from 1885 to 88 and then he was also a member of the indian national congress 
and he it was also founded he was one of the founders of inc and uh, sir surendranath banerjee was also the founder from he was from calcutta and after a few years you know after found, uh, founding inc uh, you know i i am so i'm sorry after few years inc was found and the objective was same so these two groups right they got merged into inc and then dada bhai noroji was elected as the president of congress in 1886 right so here it was ina you don't get confused indian national association this was founded by surendranath banerji and then later it got merged into inc okay congress now so dada bhai noroji he moved again to britain and he was elected as the as you can see he was uh, he was from the liberal party and from the finsbury center that is was that was his constituency at 1892 he a general election he became the first british indian member of parliament there and during his time he put his efforts towards improving the situation in india he set forth his view about the situation in india over the course of the history over the governance of the indian i mean of the country and the way you know the colonial rules are ruling in the country that is in india and he was a staunch moderate within congress so we know there were two factions of uh, um, you know inc that time it was moderates and extremist and you know who who is the leader of extremist we have already discussed about him in personalities please comment right so now let's know about his personal life about a bit about his personal life and death so he was married to gulbai at the uh, gulbai okay gulbai at the age of 11 and he died in bombay on 30 J uh, june 1917 at the age of 91 so dada bhai naroji road uh, this is a heritage road of mumbai and is named after him as a you know legacy to remember him his drawn granddaughters perin and khurshad ben they were also involved in independence uh, movement and in 1930 khurshad ben, ben was also got she got ar arrested Uh, because she was also one of the revolutionaries she attempted to hoist the indian flag in uh, government college in ahmedabad right now this famous drain theory so uh, this this uh, piece of information is very important to you right so i have spent more time uh, you know for discussing this only because he was uh, he had brought attention uh, no one and ever before no one before him you know brought attention to uh, to you know this theory this um, the economic situation where the economic hardship which indians were facing that time so he was the pioneer of this right so that's why he is remembered the most so let us now discuss about this right so his work was fo focused on the drain of wealth from india to the britain and during of obviously the british rule right the colonial rule so one of the reasons that the drain theory is attributed to dada bhai noroji is is because his decision you know he he estimated net net national profit of india and by extension the effect that this colonial rule had on the country right so through his work with economics he sought to prove that britain was draining money out of india right so the economic condition of india worsen because of you know british uh, british colonial rule so he was the one who drew attention to the, to this aspect of economy so dada bhai naroji he described six factors which resulted in the external drain so we'll discuss those six steps first one was india was governed by a foreign government right second so india did not attract immigrants which can brought uh, which brought labor and capital for economic growth and the third one is this is the very important i i feel so india paid for british uh, britain civil administration in india and her indian army right so we indians had to pay for the maintenance of the civil administration of britain and also their army and india was getting nothing from i mean in return okay then fourth one india bore the burden of empire building in and out of its border obviously right and then fifth one the opening of the country to free trade allowed foreigners to take the highly paid jobs here right but uh, as you know i mean most of you know that the most prestigious uh, you know uh, positions the the senior positions were actually occupied by europeans by british only indians though more qualified than them 
मोर यू नो दे हैड मोर मेरिट बट स्टिल दे वर ऑल्सो दे वर ऑलवेज मेड टू वर्क बिलो दैम सो दैट्स हाउ देन द लास्ट पॉइंट विच ही एक्सप्लेन वर्स द प्रिंसिपल इनकम अर्नर्स राइट दे यूज टू अर्न मनी एंड दे वुड स्पेंड मनी आउटसाइड दे वुड नॉट स्पेंड मनी इन इंडिया एंड दे यूज टू सेंड इट आउटसाइड ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज दे वर ब्रिटिश दे वुड टेक टेक ऑल दे विल अर्न मनी फ्रॉम हेयर बट दे विल टेक ऑल द मनी फ्रॉम हेयर टू देयर होमलैंड देन हिज बुक एज आई मैंशन अर्यर पॉवर्टी एंड अन ब्रिटिश रूल इन इंडिया इट एस्टिमेटेड अराउंड टू हंड्रेड टू थ्री हंड्रेड मिलियन पाउंड्स यू नो पाउंड्स स्टर्लिंग दैट इज द करेंसी ऑफ इंडियन रेवेन्यू टू ब्रिटेन वॉज नॉट रिसर्कुलेटेड इन इंडिया ऑब्वियसली वी वर पेइंग देन एंड वी वर बट वी वर नॉट गेटिंग एनीथिंग इन द रिटर्न सो वेन रेफरिंग टू द ड्रेन ही स्टेटेड दैट द मनी बींग अर्न बाय द रेलवे डिड नॉट बिलोंग टू इंडिया दिस वॉज इन वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल्स राइट सो रेलवे वॉज एक्चुअली वेरी प्रॉफिटेबल बट नथिंग फ्रॉम द प्रॉफिट इंडियन इंडियंस फॉर एक्चुअली बेनिफिटिंग फ्रॉम ऑल द बेनिफिट्स ऑल द यू नो एवरी एनी एवरी इकोनॉमिक प्रिविलेज यूज टू बी टेकन बाय ब्रिटिश ओनली इंडियंस गॉट नथिंग दे गोट दे डिन गेट बेनिफिटेड एट ऑल सो दिस सपोर्टेड हिज असेसमेंट दैट इंडिया वॉज स्पेंडिंग यू नो सेंडिंग टू मच टू ब्रिटेन and according to him india was paying tribute uh, for something that was not bringing any profit to the in, uh, country right directly so instead of paying off foreign investment which other countries did did india was paying paying for the services rendered despite the operation of railway which was profitable for britain so this type of drain was experienced in different ways as well okay this railways was just an example so for instance british workers they earning wage right If workers used to earn wage they were that was not equal with the work they have done in india because the trade even uh, we didn't have free trade right and uh, how you know that theory is very famous indian became the exporter of the finished uh, i'm sorry exporter exporter of the raw material and importer of the finished products so that is also one thing so the indian goods they were undervalued and the outside goods right they were overvalued so british workers in indians were encouraged to take on high paying jobs right because they were only they used to get promoted they used to grab the high uh, plum you know i mean all the high paying jobs everything high positions so they used to have everything and they would take this income back to the britain obviously and furthermore that east india company was purchasing indian goods with money drained from india and then and they would export it to britain right and this is how the free trade was not at all uh, it was not at all free trade it benefited only britains right only british so when elected to the parliament by a narrow margin he was elected and then his speech was devoted to the issue of questioning british role in india and dada bhai naru ji explained that indians would either be british subjects or their slaves obviously depending on how willing britain was to give india control over the institutions that britain presently operated by giving these institution to india it will allow india to govern itself and as a result all revenue would stay in india but that didn't happen right till until 1947 15 august so dada bhai naru ji identify himself as a fellow subject of the empire and was able to address the economic hardship face facing in mean, which indians were facing so he presented himself as an imperial subject right and he was able to use rhetoric to show the benefit to britain that an ease of financial uh, you know financial burden on india would have he argued that by allowing the money earned in india to stay in india tributes would be willingly and easily paid without the fear of poverty but uh, this was i think it was kind of face to tell all this because they knew it and they still they I mean they were very greedy so they didn't care about the poverty of indians so he argued that this could be done by giving equal opportunities to indian professionals and who were consistently forced to take jobs they were over qualified right even if they were qualified they were not given those posts right those positions it was kind of reserved for british even though they were not much you know qualified so indian labor would be more likely to spend their income in india so this was one of the aspect which could you know prevent this brain drain i mean uh, wealth drain so so dada bhai naru ji also found it uh, you know important to examine 
द एंग्लो इंडियन ट्रेड टू प्रिवेंट द प्रीमेच्योर डिसोल्यूशन ऑफ बर्डिंग इंडस्ट्रीज राइट सो वी नो ऑल द इंडस्ट्रीज वर क्रश्ड एंड हाउ अनफेयर इट यूज टू बी फॉर इंडियन ट्रेडर्स राइट दैट टाइम सो इट बाय अलाउविंग इंडस्ट्री टू ग्रो एंड डेवलप इन इंडिया ट्रिब्यूट कुड बी पेड टू ब्रिटिश इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टैक्सेशन राइट ऑब्वियसली देर हैड टू बी दे वर टैक्सेस बट द बर्डन वॉज सो मच वॉज वेरी मच राइट एंड एंड द इंक्रीज इन इंटर इन इंडियन इंटरेस्ट फॉर ब्रिटिश गुड्स सो दैट डिन हैपन न ओवर द टाइम ना दादा भाई नारोजी ही बिकेम मोर इन्फ्लेमेटरी ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज एनी वन विल लूज पेशेंस राइट सो इन हिज कॉमेंट ही बिगेन टू लूज पेशेंस बिकॉज या वी नो दैट दिस वॉज नेवर देयर इंटेंट राइट दे कॉन्ट यू नो लेट गो ऑफ देयर प्रॉफिट्स सो ब्रिटिश यू नो दे हैड नो इंटेंशन ऑब्वियसली सो देर वॉज लैक ऑफ एनी प्रोग्रेस रिगार्डिंग द रिफॉर्म्स सो हिज वर्क ऑन द ड्रेन थियोरी वॉज द एक्चुअली मेन रीजन बिहाइंड द क्रिएशन ऑफ रॉयल कमीशन दो देर वॉज वन कमीशन फॉर्म यू कैन टेक दिस डाउन रॉयल कमीशन ऑन इंडियन एक्सपेंडिचर इन एटीन नाइन्टी सो ही वॉज ऑल्सो ही ऑल्सो बिकेम अ मेम्बर ऑफ इट so this was his contribution because of his work on drain theory so this commission reviewed financial burdens on india and in some cases came to the conclusion that those burdens were misplaced okay so even they realized a bit but uh, we know what happened then now his legacy so dada bhai naroji is regard, regarded as one of the most important indians during the birth of the nascent that is early when independence movement was not even you know people were not even aware about indian national movement independence movement so in his writing he came to the conclusion that a exertion of this foreign rule over india was not at all favorable for the country and that independence would be better path for india right so he recognized this fact so for the development he was checked by the frequent invasions which india faced right and subsequent rule of the foreigners of entirely different character like britishers only right britishers only and other europeans as well who had no sympathy for you know indian indigenous literature our literature and they had actually fanatical antipathy by to the religion of hindus and which you know prevented their growth and then priesthood so first for power and afterwards for ignorance completed the mischief as has happened in all over, all other countries now so bal gangadhar tilak so he was the leader of the extreme extremist faction so bal gangadhar tilak admired him he also admired him though he was the uh, dada bhai naroji was a strong we have we 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 have um, i mean i mentioned earlier strong moderate so he belonged to the other faction but still bal gangadhar tilak he admired him that if 28 crore of indians were to, were entitled to send only one member to the british parliament there is no doubt that we would have elected dada bhai naroji unanimously to grace this post right now his contribution so some of the significant extracts you know he he had delivered a, a speech so right before the east india association on 2nd may 1867 so this is you know some kind of some extracts of that speech right regarding the british rule so the difficulty thrown in the way of according to the uh, natives such reasonable share and voice in the administration of the country and they are able to take are creating some uneasiness and distrust the universities are sending out hundreds and will soon begin to send out thousands of educated natives this body naturally increases in influence now uh, these are the some of the list of you know his work famous works this is also important you can take the screenshot of it right so rasko go, uh, go after i have mentioned that manners and customs of parsis right and then his famous uh, he, he also presented a uh, paper and then his uh, poverty and un british rule in india right so all this with this we have come and end to this episode hope you enjoyed it enjoyed it you know and if you did please don't forget to like share and do subscribe vaishya's channel right we'll meet in the next one thank you